Hello everyone, welcome back. Let us continue our discussion on numerical methods. So, if you recall, uh, in the previous two lectures, we derived the expression for different numerical techniques and the first one is by Nigam and Jennings. And we derive the expression for a single degree of freedom system where there is no damping. And the expression for response, uh, if you recall, is x i plus 1 is equal to a x i plus b x i dot plus c f i plus d f i plus 1. So, that is the displacement at time t i plus 1. Right. Now, for that, what are the quantities required? Obviously, the displacement and velocity at ith time point as you can see x i and x i dot and the forcing function which is defined at ith time point and i plus 1 th time point. So, this is f i and f i plus 1. Now, all of these quantities are multiplied by a constant. So, x i is multiplied by a similarly x i dot by b f i by c and f i plus 1 by d. And we derive the expression for these four constant a, b, c, d. And if I extend the same uh, derivation for the velocity at i plus 1th time point, the format is all the same. So, it is a prime x i plus b prime x i dot plus c prime f i plus d prime f i plus 1. And if you refer that lecture, we derived these expressions for a, b, c, d and a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime. Although that was for a case when there is no damping. And I left an exercise for you as a home task to extend that derivation for the case when we have damping. And now what you can see on your screen is if we have damping and then these four constants a, b, c, d and a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime and you can see the expression obviously the damping is included here. So, this was the task for you. Today what we are going to do is to write a MATLAB code so that we can develop a function file and solve the response at the i plus 1th time point and then we will continue that for the complete forcing function and we will find out the response and actually we will compare that response with the Duhamel integral. So, for that uh, let us develop the MATLAB code. So, what we do? We develop a function file. So, a function which will give me output and that is the response x underscore t and x d underscore t. So, that is the displacement and velocity right equal to let me give a name. So, Nigam, Nigam and Jennings and the input for them uh, is m k eta that is damping then t that is the time at which the function f of t is defined and then the initial conditions x0 and x0. Now, Once we do that, what we have to do? We have to 
first find out the natural frequency so wn is equal to square root of k by m and then damped natural frequency which is wn times square root of 1 minus eta square okay now once we have these two parameters defined then let us first find out the number of time points we have so we provide this t that is the time at which the forcing function is defined so length of t gives the number of time point we have and then we initialize this function x of t so we have zeros for all of them and then we also define the velocity and once we define that the first one will be the initial displacement and velocity so let us define that we just assign the values that we have already provided at the first time point so xd underscore t1 will be equal to xd underscore 0 that's what we have already provided okay now once these are done we have to actually define this a b c d for that let me just increase the size so that you can see so what we have here a is equal to so you can see what we have exponential minus eta omega n then delta t so dt which is not defined i will do that in a minute so once we find out the length of the time vector so let us find out dt which is equal to the difference between the two consecutive time instant obviously dt is constant and that's the reason we use the first two time point to define uh, this parameter and then within the bracket you can see we have uh, eta divided by square root of 1 minus eta square sorry this is sqrt okay that multiplied by so let us put a bracket here so this one multiplied by sine of omega dt times delta t plus cos of omega d times delta t so a is defined so let us define b b is equal to exponential of eta omega n dt so let us copy it then sine omega d t so sine of omega d times dt then divided by omega d so that's b now c is equal to 1 by k so one by k times 
the expression in the second bracket so let us do one by one two eta divided by omega n star dt plus exponential of minus eta omega n dt so I can take this from the previous expression and then within the bracket we have the expression 1 minus 2 eta square divided by omega d star dt and then minus eta by square root of 1 minus eta square so we can put that expression here okay so what we have you can see so the this complete expression multiplied by sine of omega dt so sine omega d star dt so and then we can actually continue in the same line or what we can do we can continue in the next line so we have minus then star cos omega d star dt and then that is multiplied by 1 plus 2 eta divided by omega n times dt. So that's the expression of C, then we have D which is equal to 1 by K then within bracket 1 minus 2 eta divided by omega n star dt then plus exponential of minus eta omega n dt so let us copy it and within this first bracket you can see 2 eta square well we use eta they have a different symbol minus 1 divided by omega d star dt and that is multiplied by sine omega d star dt then plus let us continue the next line 2 eta divided by omega n 
star dt which is multiplied by cos omega d star dt. So now we have d. Then let us define a prime. So it is minus exponential of minus eta omega n dt so w n divided by you can see here square root of 1 minus eta square so square root of 1 minus eta square okay and then that is multiplied by sin omega d star dt. Similarly, we have to define b prime. It is again exponential of minus eta omega n dt. Then within bracket we have cos omega d star dt minus then eta by square root of 1 minus eta square star sin omega d star dt. So, let us define c prime is equal to 1 by k then within bracket you can see first term is minus 1 by dt so minus 1 by dt then plus exponential of minus eta omega n dt. So, let us copy it. It is multiplied by <coughs> then we have some constant times sin omega dt. So, let us write it so that we do not miss the syntax. So, sin omega dt plus 1 by dt star cos omega d star dt. And then before sin omega d dt what we have is omega n divided by square root of 1 minus eta square then plus eta divided by dt divided by square root of 1 minus eta square ok so the last one dp that is d prime is equal to 1 divided by k divided by dt then within bracket 1 minus again exponential of eta omega n dt then within bracket we have eta star sin 
omega d star dt divided by square root of 1 minus eta square plus cos omega d star dt. Okay. Now, once we define all these constants, then the problem is pretty simple. So, we have to start a loop. So, for i i ranging from 2 to n t. So, we start the loop and then we have to find out x t of i i because the i i starts from 2 obviously in the inner loop x t starts from i i or otherwise we can also start from 1 to n t minus 1 okay in that case this will be as per our notation so as per our notation written here you can see x i plus 1 okay so in this case it will be i i plus 1 will be equal to a star x t defined at i i plus b x d of t that is the velocity at the point i i plus c then forcing function at the point i i plus d star f t at the point i i plus 1. So, we follow the same notation that we used to define the expression on your screen. Similarly, x d of t i i plus 1 will be equal to the same expression we can copy just we have to change these constants. So, first one will be a prime, then b prime, then c prime and then finally d prime. So, that is the complete code for Nikam and Genix. Okay, so now we have to run this code. So, let us run the code for that we have to uh, develop a function file that will call this. So, let us uh, save this function file. So, you can see the function file that we developed in the previous class. So, it is call underscore duhamel if you recall and we use this code to solve the duhamel integral. So, uh, and then, uh, so this is the new part. So, we call it Nigam and Jennings. So, what we do, we define the initial displacement and velocity. So, this is the initial displacement and the next one is obviously initial velocity. Then, uh, we call this Nigam and Jennings that we have just developed. Then once we call the input will be m k eta t function uh, forcing function and then initial conditions right. So, once we call this function we will get x of t and x d of t right and then we plot and obviously we compare with Nigam and Jennings. So, let me first quickly run the previous part 
and then we'll compare it so if you recall this was the solution uh, what we developed so here you can see l centro ground motion that is the recorded ground motion and uh, for this motion we use duhamel integral to find out this solution so this we did in uh, the previous week today we are going to solve the same uh, using nigam and jennings in a minute and we'll compare the response that we get from nigam and jennings with these results so that will also give us confidence whatever we get from duhamel integral whether it is correct or not so let us do that so what we do um, so we run this to code so previously we solved this one using l centro ground motion we have the response using duhamel integral and then now what we do using nigam and jennings and then we plot the result using nigam and jennings and then compare it with duhamel integral so if i just zoom in you can see both of them they are matching with one another so you can see on your screen the continuous blue line is nigam and jennings and the orange dot is what we get from the duhamel integral so that tells us that the response what we get from the duhamel integral is actually the same what we get using nigam and jennings so one is a convolution integral and the other one is uh, using the expression developed by nigam and jennings and in fact uh, during the lecture i told you you can refer this document it is available uh, in net so you can easily download so this was the original document developed by nigam and jennings and it has the complete detailed formulation these are the expressions you can see what we have just uh, uh, used in our matlab coding so i will suggest all of you to go through this very old document it is available you can download easily and there are other discussions uh, on the error estimations using this code and uh, this is a very good read and in fact i think at the end the very old code yes in fortran it is also given this is the fortran codes today we can very easily develop um, the code in matlab but the original code is also given so if you wish to explore fortran you can also refer this document so this document complete document is there you download and then go through this document this was originally developed by nc nigam in the year 1968 okay so now what you can see the expressions that we developed using nigam and jennings formulation that gives us the accurate estimation of the response now after that we continued our uh, discussion on something called central difference formulation so central difference technique now for that again the algorithm is here given you can see on your screen these are the expressions we developed if you recall and then uh, you can easily develop a function file for this central difference technique and again i will leave that as an exercise for you all of you should try and develop a code it's very simple you can follow this algorithm this two algorithms taken from uh, onil ke chopra's book and then uh, you can follow this algorithm and develop a code and compare the result that you get using the code that we have already developed using nigam and jennings or duhamel okay so that's an exercise for you now 
there are other two techniques also that we discussed one is um, wilson theta another is numark beta but before that i want to discuss something uh, that we did not study in our previous lecture so it is the inbuilt option in matlab what we'll use to solve the same response at the background it uses actually a technique another numerical technique called ranga kutta algorithm so it uses a inbuilt option in matlab called od45 solver and other versions of od solver but uh, the command in matlab is lsim and how to use lsim so that i am going to discuss quickly so before that we have to just quickly go through the theory so if you recall our equation of motion is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f of t so this is a ordinary differential equation and then we can express this equation in state space form so if we assume say x is equal to x1 obviously x1 dot is equal to x dot and then let this be x2 then obviously x2 dot will be equal to x double dot now if we use this expression so m times x double dot so it will be x2 dot then second one is c times x dot so that is x2 plus k times x so which is x1 is equal to f of t so we can write down two first order differential equation so x1 dot x2 dot will be equal to so that's the expression the same dynamic equilibrium equation in straight space form so in the symbolic expression we call it say x1 dot x2 dot and on the left hand side we have a b c sorry
so this is a times x1 x2 plus b times the forcing function and we'll solve this equation just now and in the elsim command first we have to define the system so for that this is the expression of the dynamic equilibrium equation in the state space form and then this is what we call the model equation so we have this is the mathematical model that describes the single degree of freedom system so for that we have this expression then we also have a measurement equation so what we measure we actually measure this displacement right so what will be my measurement equation if we call it say y is the measurement so this is equal to 1 0 x1 x2 plus then we have 0 times a of t. So if I write this is my y equal to c times x1 x2 plus d times f of t. So that is the measurement. So these are the two equations that we'll use to define the system first. So we'll define the say SYS that is the system is equal to SS A comma B comma C comma D. So that defines the complete system. So if you look at the expression for A, B, C, D, these are dependent only on the mass, damping, stiffness parameters. So we can easily define these four uh, matrices A, B, C, D and then using that we can define this system. Now once we do that the command for finding out the response is LSIM so small l LSIM within bracket the system that we have already developed then we have to give the forcing function F underscore T comma t. So this is basically the command inbuilt option in MATLAB that will give us the response. So let us now develop the code for that. So so we have this code. So what you can see uh, the moment we define mkc so we first evaluate omega n and then from that we can calculate what is c then once we do that we can define this a matrix so it is uh, as you can see 0 1 and in the next line we have minus k by m and minus c by m then we define the b matrix c and d and then we define the system and then we fall using lcm so we will again compare this same response with Duhamel that we have already developed. So let us run it and let us see how uh, the response looks like. So as you can see, so we started with this one with Duhamel and then we compared with Nigam and Jennings and then finally Again, uh, we use LSIM actually to solve the response and then again compare it with Duhamel and if you 
see the match there is a perfect match between the two response so that concludes the response whatever we get from duhamel is uh, the same response what we get from um, nigam and jennings and elsim that uses od solver okay so up to this point it is fine then uh, we developed two more um, algorithms one is for wilson theta and the algorithm that you can see and this is for will sun theta and this algorithm is taken from uh, kj bath's book so you can refer um, and then we'll develop the code in a minute that code is uh, i'll show you it's very simple what you can see we have to define these constants that we derived earlier and then using these constants then we'll find out the response in an iterative way so this is the logic for wilson theta so uh, now i am not going to type it uh, we already have the code ready so let us show you i'll share all these codes with you so that you can also run it and then uh, check the response you can also do it at your own uh, and then compare okay so here you can see the wilson theta algorithm and again the logic is given here so for wilson theta again uh, we have mck that is the mass damping and stiffness then we define the time and the forcing function and then the initial condition and if you recall theta we always set 1.4 so anything above 1.38 offers a stable solution for wilson theta so that's why uh, the recommended value is 1.4 so we use 1.4 you can try with any other values and check the um, accuracy of the solution that you get then what we do we find out the dt obviously we need to find out the length of the number of time instant we have so that we do because we have to run the loop and then again we initialize and uh, there are other um, expressions in the wilson theta effectively what we do we find out effective stiffness uh, and we solve k x equal to f so you can see this equation here and then that's what is uh, done in this code in this function file so you can see a0 a1 up to a8 are first defined these are the constants that depends on the theta and dt and then we find out k effective what you can see on your screen here and then we run the loop and then for that first we find out if effective and uh, that's given here in the segment b the first line you can see the forcing function they define it using r so we have that um, effective force and then we solve at this line in the algorithm uh, lower and upper triangular matrix is used but uh, we have used inbuilt option using matrix inversion either way you can do it because we have a small matrix for this k effective so we don't need to go for this factorization for the time being and then once we find out x effective that is the solution at this and then we can find out the displacement velocity and acceleration at t plus delta t and that's precisely what is done here in these three lines okay so that's the code for wilson theta and let us uh, run that code so 
for that again uh, we call the function so here is the function so we'll solve wilson theta now and for that again we define mass damping and stiffness and also the time and forcing function and then once we solve it again uh, we compare with other solution that we have already developed so let us run this code and see how the response looks like so now what you can see we have solved the same example using Wilson theta and then we compare that with LSIM what is already there in MATLAB and I have already explained how to use LSIM. Again in this case you can see the Wilson theta gives a very accurate result so long theta equal to 1.4. Now uh, we can quickly try with a different theta let us see if we have um, theta say 1.2. Okay. Let us see what is the response. And you can try with other parameters of theta. Obviously, for this problem, it is okay. Um, but again, if you try with any other parameter, um, you can check that result will not be accurate. So, um, sorry. So, for example, if you have uh, say 0 0.2, just let us try. Yeah, you can see. So, that's the reason you should have for all stable solution, you should have 1.4. When we will actually discuss multi degree of freedom system, then I will come back to this point again and uh, then you will see anything below 1.4 or actually 1.38 will give you, will solve a response but that is uh, unstable numerically. So that is the Wilson theta algorithm. Now we have one more algorithm and that is called Numark beta. So for Numark beta again we use the same textbook by KJ Bathe and what you can see on your screen is the algorithm for Numark beta. This we again have already discussed. It has uh, two constants. We used actually uh, beta and gamma if I correctly recall but uh, in this Bathes book they use two different uh, Greek alphabets to define these constants. Nevertheless um, this is basically the algorithm and then uh, using this algorithm we have again developed the code and that Numark beta code is here. So again uh, for the time being, so this is this switch is not required. So let me just uh, uh, remove it and uh, that is necessary because Numark beta has two option if you recall average acceleration and constant acceleration. So uh, the code is uh, generic and it can actually um, manage either of the two. Oh, I think I have removed some part. So, for example, let us start with say linear. So, that is for linear acceleration. So, let me just write here. And then we also have constant or average acceleration. So 
So for the time being, let us not use this switch and then remove this type of solution. So that's the uh, Neumog beta code. And then again, here you can see, we again find out A0 to A7. These are the constant that depends on the parameters of Neumog beta and dt. And then uh, we first calculate k effective and then every time instant we run the loop first we find out x uh, sorry f effective and then find out x effective again uh, in the bathes book if you refer they uh, i mean develop this code for multi degree of freedom system and for large finite element models uh, then uh, if you solve this uh, expression you use uh, lower and upper triangular matrix because for large matrices, matrix inversion is not recommended. That's the reason they use this solution technique. But for us, uh, because we have a single degree of freedom system, we don't need to worry about this step B2, this step for the time being. So we can uh, use this inversion of K effective and then find out the solution. So once we find out X effective, then again the remaining task is to find out displacement x of t then xd of t that is the velocity and then xdd of t that is the double derivative of x of t that is the acceleration. So that is the code again let us uh, run this code and then see what we get. So let me remove this switch. and run this code. So here you can see um, Neumark beta with the parameters that I have used. Solution is very close but now you can see it slightly differs. Sorry this will be um, I think yes because we have used Neumark beta. So in this case it will be not Wilson theta. Neumark beta. So let us quickly run it once more. So what you can see the response is following the same pattern but uh, we have numerical difference between the Neumark beta and the will LSIM. But we can again uh, reduce this difference just by reducing the delta t and other parameters. Nevertheless, the solution is uh, very close to the solution that we have get from LSIM. Now, if we just quickly try with uh, average acceleration and see what is the response? So, we use the parameters of alpha and delta for average um, acceleration and then uh, let us see. Again you can see there is a small difference at some points. Nevertheless, the pattern is all the same and the difference is very small. Uh, we can again uh, reduce the time step and then uh, control this difference. But uh, that clearly gives you the idea how to develop the codes for this numerical techniques using different approaches. And as you can see, I purposefully set the parameters uh, in such a way that you can see the difference, small difference between the two solution techniques. Again, numerical solution, uh, many uh, cases it comes with some numerical error as you can see and uh, there are uh, ways to control, reduce and manage these uh, numerical differences. As we progress, we will see. But from this uh, demonstration, you can easily 
um, conclude that first thing the Duhamel integral works fine for any arbitrary loading and then we also have uh, developed different uh, numerical techniques for example Nigam Jennings then central difference then Wilson theta Neumach beta all of them they get uh, the solution for the dynamical systems where we have forcing functions which is arbitrarily defined. Out of that I leave one small exercise for you and you develop a code for uh, central difference technique and see how uh, the solution is using central difference and compare that with other um, solution techniques. I will share this function files so that you can also uh, run this code and then uh, parallelly also you can try at your own end and then develop these uh, codes and also uh, told you the reference. So we use mostly uh, Anil K. Chopra's book and then K. J. Bathe's book. The reason why I uh, use K. J. Bathe for this Wilson Theta and Numark Beta is that these two algorithms are developed for MDOF system. As we gradually progress in these cores, we will go for multi degree of freedom system. So the code for Wilson Theta and Numark Beta is already developed. We will use this code to find out the response of the MDOF system. Otherwise, in case of uh, Nigam and Jennings, this is for single degree of freedom system. We can also use this code to find out the response of the multi degree of freedom system. And uh, again, in Anil K. Chopra's book, you have the algorithm for Wilson Theta and Numark Beta, but uh, that is again for uh, single degree of freedom system. That's the reason we refer this K. J. Bathe's book so that we can develop. We have already developed this code and we will use this code directly to find out the response of the MDOF system. We will come back to this code when we will cover the multi degree of freedom system. So with that, let me close here and uh, my suggestion to all of you, you please try this code and then develop this and then you can uh, refer the code that I have developed. I will share this uh, function files, but you try at your own end and then uh, compare the responses that will give you confidence as we progress further, then you can develop other codes to find out the response of a dynamical system. With that, let us conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you.